Good morning, Susanna. How are you? Fine, I guess. You look tired. I am. Why is that? Polly went crazy last night and we sank her. Lisa and me. Did it soothe her, your singing? She stopped crying. Have you become friends with Lisa? Why? Is it bad? Does it feel bad? <sighs> no. Did you have many girlfriends before you came here? Not really. Would you say before you came here, your friends consisted mainly of boyfriends, men? Does it say I'm promiscuous in there? Why did you choose that word? Or should I say horny? You should say what you mean. You consider yourself promiscuous? No, but you do. What makes you think that? How many guys would it take for me to sleep with to be promiscuous? 10, eight, five? What do you think? How many girls would it take for a guy my age to sleep with to be promiscuous? 10, 20, 100? A nine? <sighs> Someone who is compulsively promiscuous might engage in a sex act with a guest in their room and then engage in another sex act on the same day with an orderly. John? <laughs> All I did was kiss him. Am I in trouble for kissing an orderly? or giving my boyfriend a blowjob. Is there something about sex that grounds you? Lifts your feelings of despair? <sighs> yes. What is that? Have you ever had sex? This is called resistance, what I'm giving you, right? Resistance is revealing. Freud thought analysis was essentially the analysis of a patient's resistance to analysis. Oh, did he? Yes. Melvin says you have many theories about your illness, one of which is that there is a mystical undertow in life a quicksand of demons that sucked you into a parallel universe. Another one of my theories is that you guys don't know what you're doing. Still, you acknowledge a problem, coping with this quicksand. The only problem that I have is coping with this hospital. I want to leave. I can't do that. I signed myself in, I can sign myself out. You signed yourself into our care. We decide when to release you. You're not ready, Susanna. Because, because I'm not, I'm not finger painting and pretending I'm a tree. Your progress has plateaued. That disappoints you? Not really. I 
I'm ambivalent. <laughs> That's my new favorite word, actually. Ambivalence. Do you know what it means, ambivalence? Textbook ambivalence. I don't care. If it's your favorite word, I would it think means that I don't care. On the contrary, Susanna, ambivalence suggests strong feelings in opposition. The prefix, like an ambidextrous, means both. The rest from Latin means vigor. The word suggests you're torn between two opposing courses of action. Will I stay or will I go? Am I sane or am I crazy? Those aren't courses of action. They can be, dear, for some. Well, I chose the wrong word then. No, I think it's perfect. It's a very big question you're faced with, Susanna, the choice of your life. How much will you indulge in your flaws? Are your flaws, your music, your identity? If you brace them as one should embrace their identity, then you may commit yourself to a life in hospital. Big questions, big choices. Only natural you'd profess carelessness about them. Is that it then? For now.